Have you ever wondered why we only hear a select few end times Bible prophecies being proclaimed regarding Israel and taken time to consider whether they are being properly placed? Jeremiah 30 says that when the Israelites return to their land, there will be peace in the land. But we're not seeing that now, because according to Bible prophecy, it is not time for the true Israelites to be back in the land just yet. If we search the scriptures to identify true Israel, we will find that they are not the people that we have been told they are. The people in Israel right now are not Jews, they're Khazars. Your true Druze or your true Yehudim are the so-called black person or African American as you like to call them sometimes. Um, they're not African at all, they're the true Jews. They're the true Hebrews that were brought over here on ships. We awaken to the deception of those leading Israel today, governmentally and spiritually, claiming to be the chosen people, whom Jesus referred to as those who say they are Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. But God has allowed this. In Genesis 9, it tells us, God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. This was fulfilled in 1948, when the sons of Japheth and Gomer, the Ashkenazis, moved into the land of Israel. You can see in Genesis 10 and the Jewish virtual library that these people are Gentiles and not Jews as they say. As the truth comes out, more and more people are becoming aware of the true identity of the Israelites, the black and brown people scattered throughout the earth that fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28, many in slave ships as prophesied in the Bible, and as of today are still in their lands of captivity as the Bible puts it and still in some kind of slavery or oppression. According to an article about the slave trade, the slaves saw America as a place of Egyptian bondage and sang about deliverance in their spirituals. Perhaps they had read Deuteronomy 28 and seen that one day their people were going to be sent into Egypt a second time, and this time by ships. They are in a land that is not their own, and Bible prophecy does not have them returning to Israel just yet, unlike what we've been led to believe as part of this deception. Deuteronomy 32 says God would scatter his people into the corners of the earth and would make the remembrance of them cease from among men. Israel was not only scattered through the earth as punishment for their disobedience to God, but through slavery were forced to change their names and no longer speak their own languages. Their identity was taken from them, and they forgot who they were, just as the word said. But it also says that God will bring to remembrance in the land of their captivity, and that is happening now. True Israel has also been blinded in part so that the gospel would go out to the Gentiles. Romans 11, as with many passages of scripture, opens up beautifully when we understand who true Israel is. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them but life from the dead? Ezekiel 37 And I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. According to Isaiah chapter 6, this awakening would come at a time of great desolation. When he asked how long it would be until the people would see, hear and understand, the answer was, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. Jeremiah 23 Therefore behold the days come, says the Lord, that they shall say no more, the Lord lives who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord lives who brought up and led the descendants of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Jeremiah 30 describes the time when true Israel will come back to the land and God's punishment on those that devoured them. For thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Therefore fear you not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for I will save you from afar, and your descendants from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you, 
Though I make a full end of the nations where I have scattered you, yet will I not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in just measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. Therefore, all they that devour you shall be devoured, and all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that plunder you shall be plunder, and all that prey upon you I will make a prey. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he has done it, and until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days you will consider it. Zechariah 1 speaks of the four carpenters that come to cast out the horns of the Gentile nations who scattered Judah and Israel to the nations as captives. Did you know that the very ones in Israel claiming to be the chosen people were instrumental in scattering and enslaving them? Could these four craftsmen refer to an alliance of nations coming against true Israel's oppressors? Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four craftsmen. Then I said, What are these coming to do? And he spoke, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these have come to terrify them, to cast out the horns of the nations, who lifted up their horn over the land of Judah, to scatter it. Joel chapter 3 For behold, in those days, and in that time, when I bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people, and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and parted my land. They have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Revelation 18 speaks of Babylon's fall. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins, and receive of her plagues. For her sins have piled up as high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. It seems as Gentiles we only apply the scripture to ourselves, but what about its meaning to true Israel? Zechariah chapter 2 Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. According to Psalm 83 in history, the nations conspired together to cut God's people off, to scatter, enslave and oppress them until this day. The land and identity were stolen and they have been kept in slavery and oppression. This is from Psalm 83. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Why is it so important that we come to a biblical understanding of true and false Israel? For a Gentile Christian who believes the fake Israel are the people of God, this deception could potentially cause discouragement and destroy a person's faith in God when things don't go as expected for this fake Israel. The deception can also hinder our effectiveness in prayer and this too is why it's vital that those of us who are Gentiles that we understand the role our forefathers had in enslaving God's people and what role we continue to have in oppressing them until this day. If we don't know the truth about these things, it robs us of the opportunity to intercede effectively on behalf of the nations. After all, the twelve tribes were scattered to every nation, and so all will come under God's judgment for their harsh treatment of them. Prayer and intercession, however, can bring the sin of our nations under the blood of Jesus and soften the blow of the judgment that is to come upon our nations for our treatment of the Israelites. Our God desires mercy, not judgment, so please seriously seek the Lord about this on behalf of your nation. A biblical understanding of who the true Israelites are and who the impostors are will put us in a better position to anticipate what is ahead for each of these groups according to Bible prophecy, which will alleviate potential discouragement when things don't go the way we have believed. For instance, many prophecy teachers are citing Ezekiel 38 as being on the horizon and ensure the body of Christ that God will take care of the people in Israel. However, if we read this passage carefully in context all the way through, we will see that it doesn't fit the current time frame, because it says that the true Israelites are living peacefully in the land in unwalled villages at the time of the fulfilment. 
A recent Christian newsletter that I've received from Israel indicates that the current inhabitants are in fact living in great fear as things escalate all around them. So who has carried out this deception? The synagogue of Satan, those who say they are Jews but are not, world leaders, Christian Zionists and well-meaning Christians who have been deceived. Are you tired of making excuses for the behaviour of those running Israel? Will you wake up and see that there are reasons why people are against them and these reasons are valid in many cases? These people who call themselves Jews are behind the most sinister schemes in the world. They are behind wars, greed, slavery and the list goes on. And yet the Christians have been manipulated into lovingly supporting them. It's time to wake up and bless the true Israel. The true identity of the 12 tribes of Israel today has been systematically hidden from us through the whitewashing of ancient artwork to Hollywood movies portraying Bible characters as white rather than black and brown, which would make much better sense given the location of their ancestral beginnings. Joseph went unnoticed in Egypt. Moses and Paul were both mistaken for Egyptians and Mary and Joseph hid Jesus in the land of Egypt. black men, they painted them as that image of being men of color. They painted very dark. But in many books after 1453, they painted white. Why? You had famous iconoclasts, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, Donatello. They were hired to paint over these images so that when a lot of people began to read the history of the Israelites and Jews, they would think that they were Caucasian. That's why. That's history. Manipulation and fear tactics have been used on Christians. When we're told to love and support Israel, it's usually in relation to the fake Israel. We've been distracted from the truth and have had man-made prophecy fulfillment. Here's an example of how man can interfere to give God just a little help. And I talked to him about the significance of moving uh, the embassy in the Jubilee year because I told him that God measures everything in modules of 50 years. And uh, I said, this is a principle that's carried out in Leviticus, the 25th chapter. I said, if you look at 1917, it was a Jubilee year and the Balfour Amendment came. And then in 50 years it was 1967 and Jerusalem was reconnected to Israel and you add 50 to 1967, and you're in 2017. I said, this is the year to move the embassy and make that declaration because it is a biblical timing of absolute precision. Once we see this, we can take a fresh look at the 1967 Six-Day War and perhaps listen to the other side of what happened to come up with an accurate truth. Miraculous event from God, or perhaps man-made? What about the 1917 Balfour Declaration? Was this God or man? The accounts of these events have shaped Christian thinking about Israel as we've been indoctrinated to believe that true Israel is back in the land, but Bible prophecy says that they are yet to return. In 2008, a mysterious prophecy surfaced, supposedly given hundreds of years ago. The so-called prophecy was from a Talmudic Jew by the name of Judah ben Samuel, and it gave a very accurate timeline of things to come. This poses some questions. Should Christians be paying any attention to anything that comes from a Talmudic Jew who places the Satanic Talmud above the Bible? By what spirit of knowledge was the prophecy given hundreds of years ago? Or was it fabricated after the events as a deception and a red herring? Whatever the answers to these questions, this writing has been a huge distraction and deception to the body of Christ. How many rapture dates were given using this satanic piece of literature as a foundation? The true jubilee will be when the slaves go free and the land is restored to its true owners. Genesis 49 gives us a description of the 12 tribes in the end of days and while there's still some dispute over which people groups are included, we can rest assured that the Lord knows exactly where the true tribes are and he will bring his word to pass. Guilty people destroy evidence and so many historical records have been destroyed, but the truth will come to light. 
If we want to be a blessing to true Israel, there's so many ways we can pray for them. For instance, many claiming to be Hebrew Israelites are preaching messages of hate against the whites and are looking forward to God's judgment on the nations because of our treatment of them. They've woken up to the truth but have not yet received their new heart. There are others that are waking up to the truth but have gone back to the law and are not living under the freedom of the new covenant. Pray also for their unity as they are still divided, but the Bible says that they will be united. They have suffered much through God's judgment upon them, our harsh treatment of them, and also because their eyes were blinded for our benefit. Pray for their healing and restoration, that they would know God's love, mercy and forgiveness and come into a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Australia, we not only tortured, raped and massacred the black people, but we also enslaved them. This slavery aspect of our Australian history has been largely hidden, although evidence is there for those who search. As intercessors for our nations, we must face this head on. If it turns out that the Aboriginal people are the original Israelite tribes, as some believe, and they certainly fit the curses and the description of Reuben in the last days as given in Genesis 49, then the weight upon our nation is greater than we have anticipated. Not only did we do these things to the Aboriginal people of Australia, we took ships and kidnapped South Sea Islanders from the tribe of Naphtali. We brought them back to our nation to work them as slaves. Our Queensland towns of Mackay and Townsville were made rich through the mistreatment of these God's precious hidden people. When the laws allowing this in our nation changed, the slaves had to be returned to their island. But in some cases that was too much to ask, and so the islanders were dumped out at sea, according to written articles. This is the history they don't teach you at school. From the 1500s to the 1900s, Africans were kidnapped and traded as slaves for whites in Britain and the US. But they were not the only brown people being kidnapped, murdered and enslaved. Our Pacific children do not know that Pacific Islanders were also kidnapped and traded as slaves in Australia, South America and New Zealand. It was called black birding. 80,000 Pacific Islanders from Samoa, Niue, Tuvalu, Rarotonga, Tokelau and throughout Melanesia were kidnapped and forced into slavery on Australian plantations. Massive slave ships kidnapped whoever they could. Fishermen were ripped from the shores. Black birders used fraudulent contracts. They dressed as ministers to trick Pacific people into their slave ships where they were chained and locked up. Many died before they reached Australia and women were brutally raped. There is a saying, behind every great wealth is a great crime and Australia was accumulating great wealth from this great crime. The agriculture was the most profitable sector of Australian trade. Pacific Island slaves were making Australia rich and for 70 years this carried on. Less than a third returned to their islands. The majority would never see their family again. Our people have died making whites rich. As I make this video, Hawaii is experiencing devastating events. It's widely accepted that many of its inhabitants are from the tribe of Naphtali those that speak goodly words as described in Genesis 49. Please pray that they will cry out to God and as they will be protected as the Bible say will happen in the last days. The truth of the Israelites is one of the most beautiful I've ever come across and I hope that you will join the many of us that are coming out of the deception and into this most precious truth of who God's hidden ones truly are. Yes, they sinned against God, worshipped false gods, and in many cases are still doing horrific things to this day. This is no reason for us to excuse our harsh treatment of them. Righteous judgment and salvation belong to the Lord alone. And finally, Romans 11 famously speaks of the temporary blindness of Israel for the benefit of the Gentiles. It finishes by saying, O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counsellor? God bless you. Thank you for listening.